Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking about rigging swim baits and paddle tails for spring bass fishing. We're talking about underspins, weedless rigs, traditional swim bait heads. We're covering your paddle tails and your hollow bellies. We're gonna give you some standard rigging and we're gonna give you some tricks that are gonna save you a lot of time and money as we head into spring. Now, just a couple of days ago, Tim did a fantastic job of talking to you guys about small finesse swim baits. You know, little guppy heads, little tiny underspins. We'll give you a link to that video. We're just gonna build on that today. We're gonna go from the little guys and build all the way up to those much larger swim baits. But a couple of rigs that we wanted to add to that equation for the little baits that you either may not be aware of or haven't had a chance to check out yet, there's two ways to do it. One is a weedless option. The benefit of going weedless, you go to a little bit bigger hook. Now you can fish it in more places, you can fish it in and around the grass, skip it up under docks in the springtime. But what I like about it is that even though I'm throwing you know, a little spark shatter, the little Scott's Burrow, or a 3.3 Kitek, even though it's that little bait, I've actually got a pretty significant hook in there and if I want to upgrade to a bait casting rod I can you're still using light line you're getting up to you know 10 pound line to throw them but you can do it on a bait caster the other way is this little guy right here and I do mean little that is a wheel head you got a little prop right behind the head of that bait think spy bait You've got a little tiny prop that when you throw that thing out there and start your steady retrieve, it's right behind the head spinning. And you mount your bait a little bit farther back than you would traditionally mount a swim bait. You leave a little tiny gap there so that that thing can sit in there and spin. It's very, very subtle. It's very different. And the bass react really well to it. That one is rigged up with a three inch easy shad. A lot of guys do it with the tiny spark shads. You can also do it with a 2.8 fat Kitek. There's basically two uh, brands that have a head in this category that I like. We'll link both of those for you down in the video description, but they're very, very light wire hooks. I mean, you're definitely talking about true finesse. A couple of years ago, I got a chance to, to do this up on the Bay of Green Bay, and it was out of this world how well on that day, the smallmouth reacted to that little wheel head over just a standard swim bait head you need to be throwing both because on a given day, one will outshine the other and it goes back and forth. Now the two most common ways to rig an average size swim bait, if you will, a 3.8 to a 4.8, you're looking at either an exposed swim bait head or a weedless head. These are the two that we use the most. This is my head, the Matt Allen swim bait head. That's a 3 8 ounce head. What I like to do with that is, is one of two things. Either I'm fishing open water, covering water, and that exposed head is gonna have a phenomenal hookup ratio because when those fish come up and hit that hook, it's already out away from the bait and they get that hook point. But the other value of it is when you're fishing deeper water and you're trying to maintain bottom contact. The benefit is that you have that lead out front rather than just having the soft material when that lead is making contact with the bottom, you get an incredible amount of feel out of that bait. The weedless rig, the benefits are obvious. You're weedless. You can throw it just about anywhere. You can creep bottom, not worry about catching up. You can throw it in the rocks, not worry about getting snagged. This is the 4 aught beast hook, eighth ounce weight. I mean, it's very, very light. You can throw it on standard gear fits the 4.8 perfectly that is at least for me the bread and butter size anywhere we go in the country if you're gonna try the paddle tail swim bait we start with a 4.8 and then branch out from there but here's a trick for you that Tim and I have been playing with this is going to save you a fortune if you guys are heavy Kitek users like we are you already know that when you're set up on a weedless rig sometimes that is only a one or two fish rig you get a brand new bait, you fire it out there, you get bit, you stick that fish, you come up and that spring ripped out of the head. 
and it blows the whole face out of that bait and it's done. Sometimes they last four, five, six, eight fish, but sometimes it really is one. Here's a trick that's going to save you a ton. That little spring on there, that centering pin that you're using on that swim bait, that is an owner CPS spring and it's the medium size. It's a standard thing that you, it's a standalone item. You can order them. I'm gonna take this one off. This is the large CPS spring, the exact same thing. It's just much larger. We're gonna put that back in its place. Now, when you rig it on a 4.8, you're gonna see a little bit of that spring trust me here it does not matter so you put the centering pin right in the center of the swim bait twist it in you're gonna twist that thing all the way in and then rig it just like normal from the outside you can't even tell the difference you can't tell that we went from a medium spring to a large here's the difference it literally will not come off. You have to destroy the baits to get them off. You can go five fish, 10 fish, 20 fish until there's no bait left before that head will separate. Get a pack of the larger springs. We're going to link them down in the video description, just like all the rest of this gear. We'll put them there so it's easy to find. But when you get those beast hooks, the flashy swimmer, all your weedless options, take that medium spring off, replace it with a large spring, and the longevity of your swim baits is going to go through the roof. Next, let's talk about paddle tails. Paddle tails are their own category because rigging them can be really challenging. A lot of the traditional rigging methods just don't hold up. With paddle tails, what you wanna look for in the head is a head that has a true cone keeper behind that head. So the two that I've got sitting here that's my head again, the Matt Allen Swimbait head has a true cone on it. You see there's a cone and a wire. There's a reason we did that. The purpose of that is because the cone works extremely well with a hollow belly. The wire works extremely well with a solid bait like a Kitek. So the combination does both. But that's one with a cone. Switching over to an underspin, the best example of a cone is gonna be this guy here the war pig. The reason why that keeper style is so important, because there are tons of styles on the market. The reason why that's so important for a hollow belly is that hollow belly swim baits are only solid in the very nose. The whole interior of the bait is hollow. So what you need when you rig that bait up is for that keeper to reach through the solid material and actually get inside the hollow portion of the bait. Once it's done that, it's now on the interior and it's pulling against the entire nose of the bait and they just don't come loose. Now the two hollows that I'm specifically using, the Bastrix, the original, uh, the Bastrix has worked for years and years and years. For those of you that noticed over the last couple of years that their swim changed a little bit, we found out that they ended up doing an extra dip on the tails and that's what caused that change and it has since gone away. Bastrix are back to swimming the way that they used to. All my recent packs look perfect. The other one that's really taken off in recent years is the True Bass. You're seeing that one thrown a lot in the south. It's a very consistent bait. We'll link both of those for you just like everything else. But those are the two standouts for me. Now we're gonna switch back over to your standard swim baits. But before I do, the difference is you might be wondering why one over the other? What is the difference? Well, a Kitek, and the reason why I'm using the Kitek is because it is by far the largest in the paddle tail category. It's what most of us are throwing. The Kitek has a very, very wide tail kick. Not a lot of roll per se, just a ton of kick back there in the back of that bait. Your hollow bellies are traditionally going to have more of a, a wiggle, if you will. That entire bait is going to look very snaky and it's going to have a ton of side to side rock. If you've got that bait rigged up right, it's going side to side and it's very snaky throughout the entire bait. It's not just that big tail kick. 
It's not that one is better than the other, it's that they're completely different. And if you're on a fishery where a lot of guys are throwing a hollow belly, you would be very wise to try a true paddle tail and get that different look and vice versa. If you're on a fishery where the Kitek has completely taken over, it's probably time to circle back around, pick up some hollow bellies again, and show them something completely different that you already know works. Now moving on to underspins. The two primary ways that we're gonna rig an underspin, the Blade Runner head, which you guys have seen time and time and time again, that is no secret. We use the Blade Runner head from a 3.8 all the way up to about a three quarter ounce head, depending on how deep we're fishing. Early season, we're throwing a three eighths. As those bass start backing off and really chasing the shad around, pushing bait offshore, we go to that three quarter in that chrome head, start fishing it underneath the shad balls and plucking off those bigger fish. Now the other one, is that owner flashy swimmer. That's that five aught flashy swimmer with a quarter ounce head. And that again is just that all around do everything. You've got the beast hook when you don't want a blade. You've got that flashy swimmer when you do want the blade. You can do anything with it. Exact same rules apply. I recommend ditching that medium CPS spring going to that larger size. Same thing with the little guys too. If you're rigging the little tiny swim baits, ditch that small spring, go to a medium spring. It'll do the exact same thing for you. Now a couple of other underspins that we want to cover. I already talked about the war pig. The other one is this little guy right here, this fish arrow. The reason why I want to include this one, because it's a much more basic head. It's just a no paint, you know, no, it doesn't have eyeballs on it. It doesn't have a lot of that stuff. It's a really basic head, but it's got a great lighter wire hook. And look how tiny this blade is. This came out of that giant, giant unboxing that Tim and I did last fall. We promised we were gonna work our way through all that gear, try and find some new things that really stood out. Well, this is one of them. Look at it. Well, here's that war pig right next to it. Look at the blade size difference. And they're not even in the same ballpark. If you've got crystal clear water or the bass are targeting little tiny bait fish, go to that lighter wire hook with that tiny little blade and you may be surprised at the results. We had a day out here on Clear Lake, of all places, where there's big bait fish, where that little blade made all the difference when the conditions were no good and the fish were shutting down. Now, we've already talked about this before, but I wanna circle back around to it. Last fall, we did a video for you on making your own underspins. I'm just gonna to touch on this because that complete video will link down in the video description. But two ways that you can save yourself a ton of time and money is these guys right here. This is a blade that can be screwed in to any standard swim bait head. And this guy is a weight with a blade that can be clipped on to any hook. So you can make any hook into a weedless or any standard swim bait head into a full blown underspin as well. If you need a bigger hook or a smaller hook or just a different look, just stocking a few of these things, throw a couple of them in the bottom of your box and you can always adapt and switch it up. And again, we'll link the in-depth version of that for you. Last but not least, I wanna talk about the bigger baits, the 5.8 and the 6.8 Kitek. And this is going to apply to your other companies as well, but those are such a standard now, a staple bait for everybody. These are important sizes to know how to rig. The 5.8 has always been difficult for me. It's an in-between size. It's easy to rig it on a swim bait head. That's easy. But when I wanted a weedless, I just couldn't find the right option. The beast hook dropped down farther than I wanted for it. Uh, I felt like it destabilized the bait. If I was going slow on bottom, it would lay over more than I wanted it to. I finally found a hook that I like. This is a Gambler 7 aught. It's bladed. The blade is big. But if you don't want that giant blade, this entire thing can just be removed. It's just held in place by a little bit of plastic. You can slide those right off, take that blade off if you don't want an underspin, and just fish the head. But that 7-aught Gambler, it doesn't have that deep throat. Comes through everything really, really well. Personally, I think that's the best fit I've ever found for a 5.8. The 6.8s are easy. Two ways to rig them. I use my own head again. That's a Matt Allen three quarter ounce head. 
and we cut the first quarter inch off the bait because it gets rounded and narrow. Take that first quarter inch off, it butts up perfectly to that head. Throw a little dab of super glue in there and you're good to go. The other way is that owner eight aught beast hook. On that bigger bait, see the difference between the 6.8 and the 5.8, that big hook on a 5.8 sticks out so far, but on a 6.8, it's a really good look. When they come in and eat it, you get a good exposed hook right away. So that's the perfect rigging for that. Swim baits are not complicated. This is something you can do. It's literally a chuck and wind bait. A lot of anglers are afraid to get into swim baits because it's such a big category. The giant swim baits cost so much money, you need dedicated equipment. But paddle tails, hollow bellies, that is not the case. You can throw this on a seven foot medium heavy or a seven six medium heavy or a seven two heavy, just depending on the size of hook that you want in there. The little guys, like Tim said, you can throw that on a spinning rod. And then as far as the actual fishing goes, this is probably the easiest version of bass fishing there is. You throw it out. If you want it up in the water column, you just start reeling. If you want to really dig bottom, let that thing hit the bottom and then just start creeping really slow. Just ticking the bottom is all you're doing. There's nothing to it. This is easier than throwing a spinner bait. It's easier than throwing a crankbait. It's easier than trying to feel a jig bite in the rocks. Just throw it out, wind it back. They have a ton of drawing power. This is something that's important for you. The bigger the bait, the larger the drawing power. So if I'm throwing a 2.8 and I'm throwing that bait in fairly clear water, those fish will come three or four or five feet to come over and get that bait. In those same circumstances, if I were throwing a 5.8 or a 6.8, that same fish or that fish's big brother or mama might come six or eight or 10 or 12 feet to get to that bait. So you're effectively covering a larger area of water with the bigger bait. Don't be afraid to upsize. The worst thing that's gonna happen, they're not gonna eat it, but they're gonna follow it up and you're gonna see where they're at. Makes a big difference. Same thing with the blade. If you've got a little bit of color in that water and you're throwing the standard swim bait and you're not getting as much play as you expect, adding a blade just increases the area that you're fishing. The fish can feel it or see it from farther. They're willing to come to it. It's really that easy. Throw them out, reel them back. Springtime is prime time for you to be trying new techniques. This is the easiest bass fishing of the entire year over the next month, two months, three months. So get out there, try some of these things that you're not comfortable with yet. Know that it's not hard to do. The fish will respond. This is the time to try it. I hope this video helps you. I know that's a lot of equipment. We're gonna break it all down in the video description to make it easier for you. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.